Ingram, congratulations for a great conference. It's really amazing. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, full disclosure first, Nimesh promised me 160 foot long screen. I actually got two 80 footers. So I really hope everyone will be able to see my presentation. Um, my name is Nir Geist. I'm the CTO and founder of Neotron, a cybersecurity company based in Silicon Valley and uh, in Israel. And I'm here to uh, prove you that security is easy. Uh, I'm sure I will be able to do that in the next several minutes. And uh, I'll also show you a live demo of two live hacks in order to prove that. Here's my presentation. So uh, rocket science. Yeah. I thought Richard Dufty solved that problem. <laughs> OK. Rocket science is not easy. I mean, that's why um, not many companies actually develop rockets and launch them to space. OK. Now let's look at the cybersecurity market. That doesn't seem like a high bar, right? That's because security is easy. Now let's uh, more seriously look at the actual numbers. For the last five years only, 1,500 new cybersecurity companies started. Just for the last five years. The global spend on cybersecurity was $383 billion just for the last five years. But more interesting is that with all these companies, and with all this huge spend, and that's a lot of money, even for all these companies that present here, that's a lot of money. The really interesting is that with all these companies and all this spend, the global spend on damage, the global cost of damage for the last five years alone is two and a half trillion dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 0.8% of the global GDP. That's a lot of money. And that's even before the adoption of uh, the full adoption of cloud. I mean, cloud is great. Obviously, we're here to discuss cloud. But the world is still very distributed. And that's the cost of damage. Well, the world is still very distributed. With more consolidation, there will be more single point of hacks, which means that cloud should be adopted, but with much better security. Now, let's break down this number a little bit more. It's a pretty scary number. First reason is that cybercrime is easy, too. Or should we say uh, cybercrime is too easy? That's the first thing. Second thing is an uh, increasingly growing industry called ransomware. You all heard that story. You know, uh, a hacker encrypts your data and asks you for uh, ransom to give it back to you. That's an increasingly growing industry. The payments for ransomware just for 2016 was $1 billion. 2017 was already $2 billion. That's an increasingly uh, growing industry. Let's look at a specific example. Samsung ransomware, it's an infamous ransomware that made a lot of noise recently, netted $1.5 million worth of Bitcoin just for the last few months of 2018. More than 30 victims, just 2018. All are mission-critical organizations, 911s, hospitals, uh, whatever, you name it, police departments. Specific example of Samsung attack happened on March 22nd. The city of Atlanta got completely disabled. Five city departments were hacked. That includes police departments, judicial system. And you know, you read about ransomware on the newspaper, but can you really imagine how uh, a city under attack is look like? Residents cannot pay their water bills. They are very disappointed. Poli <laughs> Cops, their efficacy is dropping because they can't take reports. That's terrible. Anyways, the incident response efforts, the digital forensics, extra stuffing, for now, because that's not over yet, cost $3 million to the city. And it's not over yet. Again, once it will be over, my guess is it will be something closer to $10 million, probably. But really interesting, you will find it fascinating, the original ransom Demand was $50,000. Okay, so for last week, it's not over yet, as I said. They're not fully recovered. Fortunately, if they wanted to pay the ransom, there is a great customer support for ransomware. I mean, there are help desks, call centers, FAQs, you name it. Probably better than, 
than most security vendors themselves. Um, another terrifying example is called Spectre and Meltdown. First problem is that most of you probably never heard about it. That's the biggest problem, because Spectre and Meltdown are maybe the worst security issue in computer history. And someone who knows who made a great effort to keep it silent. The main reason is because there was no solution for Spectre and Meltdown. And it's the worst security issue, not just because um, it granted the attacker with a full access to the most sensitive memory, kernel memory of your computer, but also because all CPUs were affected. All CPUs. It's not just your PCs or your Mac or your mobile phone. It's all IoT devices. Every computerized system is exposed to Spectre and Meltdown. <clears throat> Most probably, all of you here are exposed too, because again, there was no solution for Spectre and Meltdown. The reason is that, first of all, Spectre and Meltdown, it's not a typical security bug. It's how the CPU are designed. That's a huge problem, and it's nothing like any antivirus or next-gen antivirus, be it AI or ML. Nothing could stop it because nothing um, like antivirus or next-gen antivirus ever seen something like Spectre and Meltdown. And that's the problem of cybersecurity in 2018. Still, any security solution is based only on what's known. Again, even if it's artificial intelligence or machine learning. Most terrifying is that Spectre and Meltdown are not the only one out there. That's because computer threats are infinite. And that's the theme of this conference, Infinity. It's great. I mean, really, I love Infinity. It's a great car, too. I mean, infinite possibilities, infinite opportunities, infinite ideas. There are just two problems with Infinity when it comes to computer security. First, computer threats are infinite, too. Second, in 2018, as I said, Almost every security product is still based on the attempt to enumerate this infinity. And that's almost silly. I call it negative security. Negative security means the attempt to enumerate all badness. Again, all security products, be it an AV or an XGen AV, AI or ML, they are all still trying to enumerate all badness in the world. I'm here to introduce you guys something that is not just different, it's actually the complete opposite of all security approaches in the world, and it's called positive security. All of you know the whitelisting, uh, the attempt to whitelist programs and applications. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about actual behavior of a computer and the mapping of legitimate behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, while bad is infinite, Good is actually finite, and that's, that's the big thing in here. If you will look at all the attempts to uh, penetrate any system for the last decade, from the Stuxnet uh, 10 years ago all the way to Sony, Equifax, you will find something fascinating. The only thing that was changing between these attacks is the vulnerability, is the malware. At the end of the day, all attackers try to do the same thing. They wanted to steal your data, to manipulate your data, to change it. The damage part of the attack is actually finite. And by mapping the legitimate ways of doing these activities, you can actually stop almost every security threat. You can get what it's, what it's called a threat agnostic defense system. Let me show you um, a live demo of positive security. So, I have two computers right here. One is the attacker, one is the victim. I'm going to use the attacker to attack the victim. Two different ways. I will show you two different attacks. So, in between these two computers, there is a, a next-generation firewall. You will have to trust me on that because I can't expose the brand or the firewall. Um, you will have to trust me on that. I know we are not there yet, but you should. There's also a very nice, very um, known antivirus suite, an endpoint security suite that protects the victim. It's an next-gen uh, endpoint security suite, a very leading uh, company. And we are going to attack it with the attacker in two different ways. 
On top of that, there is a Neutron security system called Paranoid installed on the victim's machine. This is Paranoid that's using 100% positive security. It is based only on the understanding of how computers should work legitimately with 0% of uh, negative security. Paranoid can operate on either detection or prevention mode. We will use detection mode, so you'll be able to see the attacks all the way. So here is the attacker, and in the middle we have the management dashboard called War Room. What you see here is uh, a 3D sphere that's showing you any size of uh, network, be it uh, a single node or hundreds of thousands of nodes. We map it using um, uh, on a 3D sphere. It supports multi-touch, as you can see, pretty cool. We can zoom in and out and see the entire organization. The worm can show you uh, the precise location of the attack as well as the spread of the threat across the organization. Let's start with the most common attack in the world called drive-by download. I will use um, Metasploit, a pretty common uh, penetration testing framework, to create a malicious website. More than 90% of the attacks are coming from malicious website. So I'm configuring the attack right now, right here. It will be just enough to visit my uh, malicious website in order for me as the attacker to get full access of the victim's computer. So the attack is ready. And uh, since we have only seven minutes, I won't uh, spend your time talking about phishing and spear phishing attacks. Let's assume I found a way to get you to my malicious website. What is also very interesting is that the attack I'm using right now is uh, a 2012 attack. It's a really old attack. So I will visit the malicious website. I could make it look like uh, whatever, Google, Wikipedia. Once I get to the website, that's what's happening. OK, we have three screens. First, Paranoid is saying that something bad happened. and just by visiting that website, I got actually a full control over the infected machine. The command line that you see here on the attacker's machine, it's actually the victim's computer. Uh, I can terminate the, uh, I can do whatever I want. I can terminate the browser. Okay. I'm writing a file on the desktop. Okay. I am absolutely inside. I can do whatever I want. Let's delete the file. I intentionally created a few steps because this positive security system that is based on the operating system behavior can detect every activity, every step of the attack. So let's look at the war room. Obviously, the antivirus nor the firewall could stop that attack. Actually, if we had more time, I could show you because uh, originally they are able to detect that, but I was able to bypass that quite easily. So here is the war room, and we see orange objects because we are on detection mode. In prevention mode, it would have been red. If I will open the, uh, um, the report, you can see actually a visual of the entire attack, a step-by-step -step of the attack. It's actually a player. We can see the browser connected to this IP address, executed shell, connected back to the attacker. We terminated the browser, wrote the file open that file. So every step of the attack got detected just by understanding the legitimate behavior that wasn't here. We actually mapped the entire legitimate behavior of the operating system. Every file deletion, every file creation, every process execution, we actually mapped every potentially harmful activity at the operating system level. We have created a map of legitimate behaviors. Now let's look at a different attack. What I have here is a very innocent-looking flash drive that's actually a keyboard. It looks like a flash drive. It's a pretty lethal attack that was there for years, and it's 50 bucks online. I mean, you can <laughs> really pretty easily get it, and nothing can actually stop it. It's called Robert Ducky. 
So it looks like a flash drive. Again, it's a keyboard that types automatically once I plug it in. So as the attacker, I program it to type whatever I want. And it's just enough to plug it in. And it will start typing automatically. I have uh, several files here that are currently fine, as you can see. They are still fine. Now let's connect the rubber ducky. It's, uh, as you can imagine, it's actually uh, a ransomware. So once I plug it in, I don't touch the computer right now, it will automatically start typing the attack directly to the computer. It's a fileless attack. It's nothing to scan. There is no malware here. It's, uh, again, what is called a fileless attack. It's really hard to detect, but actually, in this case, nothing can detect that specific attack. Neither device control, unless you um, block keyboards, which I believe you don't. And it takes some time because it literally types the malicious code directly to the machine. So in just uh, one minute, hopefully, you will see, oh, here it is. You can see how the files get encrypted. So Paranoid already detected that. And we need to pay 13 bitcoins. Well, back then, that was not uh, <laughs> impossible. And there are no files anymore, as you can see. So if we look at Paranoid, we can really see a step-by-step -step of the attack with the root cause, which is um, a USB flash drive. So as I mentioned, this all demo is based on positive security. We really don't know anything about threats. We literally do not research threats at all at Neutron. We have nothing to do with vulnerabilities, with exploitations, with malware. We literally don't care about how the attacker works and, what, and how the attack is look like. That's what is called positive security. So um, I hope you will enjoy that uh, demo. If you can give me back my presentation, that would be great. And just to summarize again, by understanding that positive security is the right way to secure your organization and not negative security, security really can be easy. I'm proud to announce at this stage that uh, just two days ago, approximately, We've signed a distribution agreement with Ingram Micro. That's uh, great news for everybody. I'm here for today, and my team is here as well. So please feel free to reach out um, to either us or Ingram Micro. You can register at niotron.com slash Ingram if you want to be the first to know once we get on the marketplace. Thank you so much, everybody.